<laughs> I believe it. Hey, man, you said, Brother Rad, I don't know how. There's a lot of things need to come into place. There's a lot of things dropping into place every day. Amen. And John chapter 4, verse 35 said, Say not, ye that there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I send you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already in the harvest. Amen. <laughs> Come on. When this thing happens, it's going to happen so quickly, it'll even confuse the farmers. Amen. Come on, man. Amen. What are you talking about, brother? Are you talking about real farmers? I'm talking about you and I. We've been, we've, we've been years planting seed. Years trying to get people in. Years watching people grow into maturity and finally get to a place where God would use them and they'd let God use them. But friend, and this last day is going to be a quick work and I believe we're going to see people mature almost overnight. We're going to see God start using people and moving through people almost instantaneously. Why? Because the need is going to be there. Amen. The season for it's going to be there. And you think, you think Peter had years and years to, to reach a place of maturity, to have revivals that thousands would be saved? It didn't take him that long. Come on, man. Amen. He preached a meeting before Christ's resurrection and liked to run everybody off. Come on. Preached about Judas. How he deceived Christ and how he, 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 he sold him out and 30 pieces of silver and bought a piece of land and I don't know, and nobody, nothing happened. What about 50 days later? 40? 47? I don't know how many. Just, just a few days later. I'm not talking about years. Months in seminary and a degree and a, a, a doctorate in theology. No, I'm just talking about a few weeks later. Amen. A few, after a few days in an upper room praying, he came out of there and, and, and stood up and started preaching and thousands were saved. Thousands came. Amen. He got up and preached again and thousands more. And finally they had to move to a bigger place. But what was it going on? It wasn't that he matured to that place over years. The God did a quick work to establish this seed, to establish this move, to establish this harvest. Amen. And that was the former. But friend, we are going to be part of the latter. And friend, it's going to be greater. Amen. It's going to be more powerful. It's going to be bigger than anything that they've seen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, man. He said, say not yet the four months, then come of the harvest. Behold, I send thee, lift up the eyes. Your eyes are looking up to the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto eternal life. But both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. I hear you. He that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Isn't that going to be some kind of sight? I can't in my wildest imagination fathom following my dad. I just followed him last week as he planted beans. All him down the road. Hold the dirt over. I can't imagine coming in behind him then. Picking the beans. <laughs> oh, man. Falling down to them rows as he watered the tomatoes that he just planted. I can't imagine falling down through there with a basket picking tomatoes. Amen. Over the years, we've witnessed the people and seen it take hold, and a few months later, they might come to church once, and then a few months later, come in and church again and, and, and then something happened over a period of a year or two and they'd be in church sort of regularly Amen. and finally something happened and God gripped their heart and they'd come to an altar and repent 
How long has it been since you've witnessed to somebody the first time and see conviction grip their heart and their life transform right there? God just move upon. Restore them. We who have a mind to work. I believe, brother, we're going to be sowing and reaping in the same paths. Elisha said, at one point, he said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I can't fathom what all God's going to do. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm filled with some regret and drudgery about what the devil's getting ready to do. I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. I don't want to see anybody sign their life away. So yeah, give me, sign me up for it. Give me the mark. I, I don't want to be left out. I want to be just as Benefited as everybody else. There's Elisha. Elijah was on that hilltop or mountain top. He said, I hear the sound. Abundance of rain. Amen. Been a long drought. Been a long, long drought. Come on now. Amen. There's a change in season coming. We better get down from here. <laughs> change in season. He said he heard it. Heard it. And still somewhat arthritic. And I don't know that I've heard it, but I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> Anytime a storm starts rolling in, I feel a little achy. Skies can be clear now. There's a change coming. <laughs> Feel it. Well. It's the truth. Come on. I haven't seen or witnessed any great blowout of miracles. Nobody's called and told me that revival's busted out and can't be contained as of yet. Not one of my preaching friends have said that. But friend, I'm here to tell you tonight, there's a change in the air. Hallelujah. And I feel it in my palms. Hallelujah. As I can hear the sound of it coming. <laughs> my heart started crying out a few months ago, Brother Hatfield. I knew where I'd let myself get to. To God, I feel a change. Feel it. When the change in my location, I feel a change. God, I know. I know that you've used me before, and I don't want to be left behind on this thing. I don't want to be on the outside looking in. God, if you just use me one more time. I want to be part of this thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Start laying in my bed, crying out to God. You're going to have to work on me. You're going to have to change me. You're going to have to strengthen my faith again. You're going to have to put that resolve in me again. Help me to get a firm foundation again. Help me to be the, the daddy I need to be. Help me to be the husband I need to be. Help 
baby God, I can be the, the man of God you want me to be. But I don't want to miss this thing for anything, Sister Mullins. I don't want to miss this thing for anything. I want to be right smack in the middle of it. Even if I'm just sitting, sitting off the edge, I'm not saying I want to be right in the middle of the pulpit. But God, if I just be in the sanctuary, when you start moving, 